good day all embryology is one of the branches of medical sciences which is very important for all the medical science students but often students find it difficult to understand embryology because we need a lot of imagination to understand the complex process on the way this is a very small initiative from my side to make the students see and understand embryology through animations let's get inside actually embryology deals about a very amazing yet complex phenomenon of development of a baby from a single cell the zygote so before entering into the complex developmental process we must clarify certain other important process we all know that a sperm and a ovum unite and form a zygote and from where the sperm and ovum are coming from i hope we all know the answer the sperm is from the father and the ovum is from the mother here my question is what is the origin of these two germ cells the sperm and the ovum any answers right the answer is the primordial germ cells or the pg cells the precursors for both the germ cells the sperm and the ovum so let's start embryology from the primordial germ cells right in this video we are going to deal about the origin and the path travel by the pg cells till they reach the gonads in the animated background ready for that right to understand the origin of these primordial germ cells we must understand the embryology of the father and the mother so let's look back into the embryology of the father or the mother first consider a sperm and a ovum unite and forming a zygote the zygote by cleavage will pass through the two cell stage four cell stage eight cell stage and will be converted into a corolla these mass of cells arrange themselves into two layers of cells one layer outside called as the outer cell mass one layer inside called as the inner cell mass with the formation of a cavity in between the whole structure will be converted into a blastocyst you'll see the detailed development later as of now we are concentrating only on the development of the primordial germ cell right we have already seen the blastocyst is made up of inner cell mass and outer cell mass the inner cell mass will give rise to the future embryo and so called as the embryoblast the outer cell mass will give rise to the supporting structures and so called as the tropoblast as of now we are concentrating only on the inner cell mass by the beginning of the second week the cells of the inner cell mass will be arranged into a double layered disk like structure called as the bilamina germ disk the upper layer of tall cells is called as the epiblast and the lower layer is called as the hypoblast by ninth day the cells of the hypoblast will give rise to one more layer of cells below the hypoblast and will establish the primitive yolk sac by 13th day again the hypoblastic layer will give rise to one more layer of cells between the hypoblast and the primary yolk sac and establish the secondary yolk sac or the definitive yolk sac now the primary yolk sac will get pinched off from the secondary yolk sac and will present as a mass somewhere inside the chorionic cavity by the second week itself some of the cells of the epiblast will be marked for the future primordial germ cells now the bilamina germ disk is ready to go into the next stage 
they try lamina germ disc stage right gastrulation or the formation of tri lamina germ disc starts by third week of development by gastrulation all the three germ layers of the embryo the ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm are established we have already seen by second week each cell some of the cells of the epiblastic layer are marked for pg cells and by the end of the second week we can see a long groove like structure in the caudal end of the epiblastic layer and is called as the primitive streak and by the beginning of the third week the primitive streak increases in length and form a pit in the cranial end that is called as the primitive pit now the cells of the epiblastic layer move through the primitive pit and will start establishing all the three germ layers in a sequential fashion at the same time we can see two addition between the newly formed endoderm and ectoderm and they are called as the oropharyngeal membrane and the cloacal membrane by 16th day when the cloacal membrane appears the posterior wall of the yolk sac form a small diverticulum and extends into the connecting stack and is called as the allantois now the cells marked for the primordial germ cells present in the epiblastic layer move through the primitive pit and come and lie along the cells of the newly formed endoderm in the wall of the yolk sac near the allantois by fourth week the embryo attains a rounded structure by cephalocaudal folding and lateral folding the gut tube formation is on the go and the newly formed gut tube is ventrally connected with the yolk sac and dorsally connected with the dorsal body wall through the dorsal mesentery at the same time along the posterior wall of the embryo a pair of longitudinal gonadal ridges develop between the dorsal aorta and the mesonephros by condensation of mesenchyme and proliferation of epithelium by fourth week itself the primordial germ cells present in the wall of the yolk sac near the allantois starts moving by amoeboid movement towards the developing in different gonadal ridges first they move along the wall of the yolk sac next over the hindgut and then move through the dorsal mesentery to reach the in different gonadal ridges by fifth week the primordial germ cells on the way will increase in number by mitotic division by 6th week the pg cells invade the gonadal ridges and induce the development of the gonadal ridges into a testis or ovary depends upon the sex of the embryo that was established at the time of fertilization these primordial germ cells are highly specialized cells they are the precursors of the gametes they induce the development of the gonads and by gametogenesis they will give rise to either the sperms or ova and they are the key cells which transmits the genetic information from one generation to other so failure of these primordial germ cells to the gonadal region by 6th week will lead to the failure in the development of the gonads right in the next video i will discuss about oogenesis in the animated background till then bye summary by second week some of the cells of the epiblast are marked for pg cells by third week the pg cells move through the primitive pit and come to lie among the cells of the endoderm in the wall of the yolk sac near the allantois 
by fourth week the pg cells start moving by amoeboid movement first along the wall of the yolk sac next over the hindgut then pass through the dorsal mesentery towards the developing gonads by fifth week they reach the gonadal ridges by sixth week the pg cells invade the gonads and induce the indifferent gonads to develop into a testis or ovary from seventh week the gonads acquire male female morphological differentiation 